Again, good morning, church. I want to remind those of you who were here this morning as we started worship that you have a job to do today. Do you remember what it was? Whenever we finish up and head out, you need to make sure that you chat with someone who you saw come in later and remind them about some of the good stuff that we have coming up, especially next weekend with our, our car wash, our Friends Day, and our Labor Day picnic. So you want to make sure you remind them, invite them, so that we can all be on the same page and hopefully not miss out on some of the good things that are going on here in Manchester. We all know, even without a sign on the screen, at least if you have kids at home or are a kid at home, we all know what the time is. It's just about time to go back to school. And I think that's probably true for, for all of the youngsters, whether and teens as well, whether they're public school, private school, home school. I think everybody is kind of in that time where they're getting ready to go again. I know some of our public school and private school kids start back this week. Uh, I know we have a few others who go to school that start back next week, just after Labor Day. Uh, but nonetheless, you know what that's like. If you're a parent or a grandparent, you've seen that happen. You know what that's like. I used a picture uh, a few years ago, more than that now, when we were still in Kansas. Of a, it was like a back-to-school photo, and it was a family, and they were, I don't know who they were. I found it on the internet, and they were lined up in front of their garage, and they had like three kids, and they were all kind of frowning, and the mom was like jumping in the air, a huge smile. She was so excited. But um, I don't know. I don't know if you kids are happy, excited, looking forward to getting back to your friends, doing new things, getting back into athletics and band and whatever it is we all do. Or if you're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe the summer's almost over and I don't want to go back to school. Nonetheless, today we're going to take some time to hopefully bless our young people who are getting ready to go back to school. Now traditionally, here we call this a sixth grade blessing. And that's a good thing. You know, there are, there are studies that show it's important to have prominent markers in life. Prominent times when you, you get to a point you realize, okay, I'm at a point. This is a significant change in my life. And so we are going to do some of those kinds of things with our youth group. And some of that will be tonight and some of it will be ongoing with our new sixth graders who are coming in. And hopefully they're here today and so you'll get to see them in just a little bit. Uh, none of the youth group or, or the teens know any of the stuff I'm going to have them do today. And I hope it's not too outlandish or too embarrassing. And not all of our teens are even here today, but that's all right. We're going to do the best we can with what we've got. But instead of only focusing on the sixth graders, I thought it would be a good thing for us to do just to recognize all of our students, all of our young people who are going back to school so that we can be mindful of who they are as a church and so that we can take some time today, appropriately so, I believe, and to pray for them. So we're going to be, that's basically what we're going to be doing here in the next few minutes this morning. But if you don't have kids, at home, or if you aren't a kid any longer at home, I, I hope you don't sit back and think, oh, well, I wish I would have known that. I would have, I'd have gone to Northside today, or I would have gone to the lake today, or something else. Because if you could remember being a kid, then you can all empathize with what they're going through, for better and for worse. And you probably can remember that even if you like school, for most people, who whether they're going into school or whether they're going into any new thing in life, a new location, a new job, a new relationship, a new anything, that there's always at least a little bit of underlying anxiety about the unknown. There's always, well almost always, there's some concern about am I ready for this? What's it going to be like? How are the people going to like me? Am I going to fit in? What if I fail? Always, well I, I don't mean to use those terms, almost always we're dealing with some of those kinds of thoughts. And so some of the things that I hope to talk about with the teens here in the next couple minutes and that we're going to talk about more a little bit tonight in the lock-in, dealing with anxiety and preparing for the newness and being ready to, to have some, uh, some tools at our disposal when we enter into those unknown uncertain times, I think those things apply to all of us, no matter how old we are, no matter what stage or station of life we're in. And because the, the scripture has quite a few things to say, and I'm, I picked out one, one scripture that I want us to highlight and think about today, because this, I think, has taught me a lot, and I think it has a lot to say to the whole church. The scripture comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. I expect that many of you already know what this passage is. Some of you may even have it memorized already. 
I'd have to look back through my notes. I think this was our memory verse a year or so ago. If not, it's likely to be our memory verse starting next week for the month of September. And it's something that Paul says to the church. And this is a church he, he, you can tell he loves them. Well, he loves all the churches. You can tell this is a church he likes. He has friends here, apparently. And he says to them, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, I'm going to ask you to participate with me a little bit. I want you to think about this first. And if you believe this is true, then raise your hand. I want you to think, do you believe it's true that God really is with us in every day, in every moment of life? Yeah, I do too. Uh, raise your hand if you really do believe it's true that whatever we end up in, whether we got ourselves into it or somebody else did, do you really believe that God has the power to rescue us and to redeem us from those difficulties and even those failures? Yeah, I honestly believe that He can. And so if we believe that God is with us all the time, and that God is able to rescue and redeem us out of anything, whether we brought it on ourselves or somebody else brought it on us, whether it was a simple mistake or an error or a sin, if we believe that God can redeem us from any of those things, then that tells us a lot about the prospects of life for us. It tells us that we can survive it. It tells us that we have hope. It tells us that we never end up at a point where we're hopeless. Never. Because God is always, He always is. And if He's always with us and He always has the power and the ability, then really what this hinges on are two, two remaining things. Do you believe that God really loves you even when you're at your worst? Because I do. And so if all those things are true, if God loves you, if He's with you, if He has the power to rescue and redeem you, then all that remains is, are we going to rely on Him to do it? Are we going to let Him do it? Are we going to give Him the opportunity to do it? And you see, that's where you have power. You may not have the power to fix everything. You may not have the power to control who your teachers are, what your classes are, or how students behave, or how people treat you. You may not have the power to, to determine if you make the team or if you get first chair tuba. But you do have the power to rely on God and to plead for Him for help and to turn to Him for help. And when things still don't work out quite the way you want, to continue to walk with Him and rely on Him because that's where our faith comes in. That even when things don't go as planned, even though whenever you and I don't get to write the whole script, faith is the idea that we're going to trust God's power and love even when we end up down a path we wouldn't choose for ourselves. Amen? And so do you believe that He's worthy of the trust? Because I do. Because Scripture shows that again and again. And it, it, it shows us that in a climactic form whenever He raises Jesus from the dead. So if you believe that those things are true, which I absolutely do, then that doesn't take away all our anxiety. Paul recognizes that there are people in the church who still have anxiety. That's why he says, don't be anxious, because he knows they already are. He's responding to something that's real. And we feel like this is a command, and sometimes we feel guilty if we ever are anxious. And we're like, oh, I know I'm not supposed to be anxious, but I am. I must be a terrible person. But the reality is, even Paul had times where he was anxious. Paul writes in other letters, like Corinthians, about times where he despaired even of life, where he thought he was going to die, where he was nervous, he was upset, he was concerned. He tells a story about a time where they're trying to find him in the city of Damascus. And he sneaks out of the city. He goes over the city walls through a window in a, in a trash can of, of sorts in order to an escape, and he runs away. Why? Because he didn't want to get captured and have done what they planned to do to him. So any of us can find times where we're afraid, where we're anxious, where we're scared. But the idea is to continue to turn to God, to continue to face our fears with God, knowing that we don't ever walk through any of those things alone. And Scripture has taught that a hundred different ways, over and over and over again, and yet we still have to decide every day that we're going to live like that. Because it just seems to be part of the human experience to deal with the unknowns with some uncertainty and some trepidation and sometimes some fear. 
So what Paul says to do here is, when you have those anxious moments, to take them to whom? Who? To God. All of them. You've heard me say before, if you've been here when I've said it, because I've said it here before, that if you look at the Psalms and see what they do, if, if we would apply the attitude of the psalmist to our lives, we'd be so much better off. Because what we see the psalmist doing is taking every single thing to God. Their praise, their thanksgiving, which Paul says we should do that too, but also their anxiety, their fear, their discouragement. There are even times, we don't want to be stuck here, but there are even times when they're angry. Even times when they're angry at God. And what do they do with that? They take it to Him. Why? Because you can't hide anything from Him anyway. He already knows what you're thinking. He already knows what you're doing. He already knows what's in your heart. So you're better off sharing it with Him. Being open and honest with God. Just like you should be open and honest with people you love and who love you in this life. But we think, but yeah, but how am I supposed to pray when I'm at school? Or how am I supposed to pray when I'm at the job? But then I'm going to focus on a simple way I think that you can pray when you're at school. And this may not apply to everybody. I'm certain it won't apply to everybody. But I'm going to give you what I've got. Whenever I went to school, especially whenever I was in junior high and high school, and we started switching classes every period, there was a, there was a little thing that happened that let us know when one period was over and it was time to get to the next one. What's that thing that happens? A bell. So you guys, raise your hand if your school still uses bells. All right, well, hey, I didn't know. I mean, I'm kind of old school at this point. I, I thought you guys might have some, uh, some new techniques. But yeah, so a bell happens. So let me, let me show you what you can do to remember to pray. As you're going through class, you show up for first period. Hey, maybe it goes great. Maybe it doesn't. But let's say it goes great. So your first period goes great. You're getting ready for second period. You don't know what's going to happen next. But before you get into second period, you know what you're going to hear, right? You're going to hear and it's something like this. And if you just had a great period, you hear something like this, suggest is that you let that... You heard it, right? Otherwise, my illustration is trash. <laughs> <laughs> when you hear something like that after you had a great period, that you thank God for it. Now, you don't have to stop and look pious. You don't have to bow your head or hold your hands. You don't have to get on your knees. You don't have to do anything special. You can keep walking to your locker. You can do it as you move. You can say it out loud if you want, but people are going to think you're psycho. So it might be better just to say it under your breath or say it in your mind. But just as you're on your way, you heard that bell, you're going to say my, to yourself and to God, God, thank you so much for letting me have a good start to the day. I didn't know how this was going to go. Whew. One period down. Thank you for being with me. That's a prayer. You can say in Jesus' name, Amen, if you want, but you don't have to. But the idea is talking to God and finding ways to build this into a habit. Because if you just think, well, I hope I remember to do that, I'm trying to give you a way you don't always have to remember. Where if you learn to let something else be your reminder... When you're at school every day, this is going to give you multiple opportunities to pray. Because let's say you go to the second period and it's gym, and you hate gym. And you especially hate gym when they make you dress out. And so they make you dress out, and they're making you run laps, and you're getting sweaty, and your hair, your whatever is messed up, and you're thinking, man, I hate gym. Good to me, and I don't know how to shoot basketball, and whatever. But then you hear, and it's time to pray again. Whatever's on your heart. And it might be, Dear Jesus, thank you, that's over. <laughs> and then you go to third period, and it's history. And, uh, and history, of course, is your favorite subject, especially world history. And don't make fun of it, because I used to teach it, and I liked it. So leave me alone. <laughs> but you go to wor world history, and your hand cramps from all the notes you have to take. And the popular kids sit back in the corner, and they're laughing, and you're pretty sure they're laughing at you. And it really isn't going well. And you do something and it embarrasses yourself. And you just had like the worst class ever. And then you hear this. And when you hear that bell, you remember, Ah, oh, yeah, but I can pray. And you say, Oh, God, that was awful. And now I've got to go to lunch pretty soon. And I don't know who I'm going to sit with. And... 
I just don't know. I, I don't want to be here. I just don't know. So God, I just don't know. But please just help me. And you can continue to do that all throughout the day. And let that bell be a reminder. I think a year or so ago I mentioned that as I was trying to become better at, at uh, being a regular prayer in my life, that one of the things I did for some time, and I think I'm going to restart it, because I let it slip, and I think it was a helpful tool for me, was I would set an alarm on my phone, like a timer, that would go off every hour, every 60 minutes. And at the end of every 60 minutes, it doesn't even have to be audible, it's just to be a little vibration. Whenever that would go off every 60 minutes, that was my reminder to stop and pray about whatever I was doing. If I was working on a sermon, I'd stop and ask God to help me write a better sermon. If I was getting ready to go visit in the hospital, I'd pray for the person who was in the hospital. If I had just got out of a counseling session with someone, I'd, I'd, I'd pray for that. Whatever was going on in life at the moment, it didn't have to be big and elaborate. It could be very short, very brief, but it was reminding me to pray. And what happens is whenever we get in that habit of going to God again and again and again, and again, it builds a holy habit that reminds us we aren't walking the halls alone. That God is with us. And that the things other people might sometimes say or do, we don't have to be afraid of that. Because God is with us. And then whenever we come together on a day like this, or we come to youth group events, or we come and wash cars together next Saturday, and we spend time like we did last night at the ball game, and all the different things we do as a church family, it reminds us that, yeah, I'm not alone in this together, and he's not alone in this together, and she's not alone in this together. And not only is God with us, but we, we are together. Amen? Amen. We are with us. And so that's another thing I want you guys to know. Not only can you talk to God, and you should talk to God as, as often as possible, but you can also talk to us. That there are people here, and you know this, who care about you, who have your back, who want you to succeed, who, who want you to grow and, and to watch you grow and to help you grow and, and just to celebrate life with you. And I'm one of those persons. And uh, I'm sure there's lots and lots more. I didn't ask for other people to, to give their phone numbers, but mine's in the bulletin anyway. But that's my number. And I know you all have a phone. Don't act like you don't. <laughs> you can put my number in your phone. And if you have an issue, you can call me. You can text me. If you need to talk about something, you can call me or text me. If you, you want to pray with me or you want me to pray with you, we can do that. Whatever the case might be. And it doesn't matter what day of the week. It doesn't matter what time. And there are others here who would do the exact same thing for you. I'm not saying I'm above that. I'm just saying I'm one of them. And so you can't leave and say, well, I'd, I had an issue and I didn't know who to call. I didn't have anyone to call. You can't ever say that. That's not true. Because we ought to rely on God. And we ought to rely on people we trust who care about us. Whether you're in high school or whether you've got great, great grandkids in high school. It doesn't matter how old we are. God still looks at us and, and, and invites us to live that kind of life together. Because He doesn't want us to live a life that is dominated by anxiety. But He wants us to have the kind of life that has peace and joy and contentment in the godliness that He offers. That He shows us, that He teaches, that, that He displayed in the life of Jesus. And that He expects the church as it lives out life like Jesus to display uh, amongst ourselves and in the world so that we can be an encouragement to each other and a light to those who are out there who need the same kind of encouragement we do. People out there who, who have the same kinds of anxieties that we do. But sometimes they have it harder. Because sometimes, sometimes some of them don't have the Spirit of God alive and at work in their lives because they haven't given their lives to God. What I'm going to do next is ask... In order, I'll, I'll give specific instructions in a moment, all of our school-age kids to come up on the stage. And the reason I want them to do that is I want us as a church to see who they are, and then I want us as a church to pray for them as they enter into what's about to become a new school year for them. Again, we'll do some more specific stuff with the 6th graders on the blessing and some orientation stuff for them tonight. If you are a new 6th grader, we've got five that I'm aware of. I hope you're all able to come tonight to the lock-in. If not, 
will continue to do some things to integrate you, to make you feel at home, to welcome you into youth group in the days and weeks to come. So first I want to ask all of our seniors, I'm going to call you up one grade at a time, I want all our seniors we have to come up on the stage right now. You guys are going to... But come on up. <clears throat> so you have Samira, Carter, and Amir. These are all our seniors right now? All right. You guys can stand over here like you like each other a little bit. All right. Because <clears throat> I'm going to have the juniors come up and stand next to you. So juniors, come up, please. I'm not going to call out everybody's name. I might be able to. Don't doubt me, I'm just not. Our sophomores. Our freshmen. And these, by the way, we're talking about milestone moments. This is another milestone. Not only are they freshmen going into high school out there, but here in the youth group, where we, we have whole youth group events. Our youth group is 6th through 12th grade. But we also have lots of events that divide them. 6th, 7th, and 8th graders together in our junior high squad and 9th through 12th graders in our senior high group. And so these new 9th graders, I know some, some of them, one of them, <clears throat> Adrian, has been begging for like a year and a half. Can I come to the senior high side? Can I come to the senior high side? No, man. Why not? You're not in senior high yet. But now you are. And we're happy to have you. And so these are our senior high young people and I want us to do it the way we just normally do it in our culture to let them know hey we love you we're proud of you we're behind you and let's do that by giving them a hand so. all right now I need you guys to squeeze in tight come on come on scoot that right about to here we're gonna do this quick there you go there you go and squeeze in tighter squeeze in tighter I think I just created the problem on the other side of the stage, Dick, sorry. <laughs> now we want our, our eighth graders to come up, please. So these, in essence, are new leaders in our junior high. They've been in sixth, they've been in seventh, and so now on some of the stuff they do that's separate from the rest of the group, these are our junior high upperclassmen, which brings new responsibility new pressure, right, to perform well, to be good examples, especially to be welcoming to the new people who are coming on in. Yeah, come on in, ladies. I think you were working back with the kids. Is that right? Good, good. Seventh graders. Seventh graders. These are like the, the middle child of junior high, right? So these are the ones that sometimes don't get much attention, don't get talked about much, but they're kind of your bread and butter, you know what I mean? They're the ones who just jump in, dig in, work hard, make you proud. And finally, our sixth graders. Where are our new sixth graders? Well, I'm excited because we got a few more than I even thought we did. So this is fantastic. So I want you guys to stand right up there, kind of in the front. And, and afterwards, by the way, parents and grandparents help us out. After we finish up our time of worship in here and head to classes, we're going to ask this whole group, 6th through 12th grade, to stay for some photos. Or Mary Brown is going to have my head. All right? <laughs> <laughs> and Dick's head. She already scalped him, see? <laughs> and so um, our 6th through 12th graders, you guys are going to stay in a little while. But before you sit down, now we want to see our younger ones who aren't in the youth group yet. But hey, they're going back to school too. And so we want to include them in this prayer. 5th graders, can you come on up? Stand right in the front. You can even use some of these steps. So let's put 5th graders right on this top step. Isn't it exciting yes. to see the youth? Fourth graders, come on down. There we go. Only two of you today. You guys got to really represent. All right, third graders. All right. 
And you can step on the next step too. You don't have to squeeze in if you don't feel like it. See, what comes before third grade? Help me out. Huh? Fourth grade. Let's try second grade. Second graders. We got the fourth and the third up here. Second graders, come on. Oh, there's one. I see Cameron. Somebody looks excited. Is he our lone second grader today in the auditorium? Well, check that out, man. Thank goodness you're here. You would have ruined the whole thing if you weren't. First graders. Some of our little ones are out. Okay, so our, kinder, our new kindergartners, we have some. And our first graders in Bible time, and that's okay. So this is a snapshot. It is in no way the whole thing. We got a lot of kids who couldn't be here today, still on vacation and things like that. But look at that. So let's give them another round of applause. Now what I want us to do as a church, you guys can stand right where you are. I'm not going to make you say anything. Let's all, the rest of us, stand as a church and do what we're talking about doing, which is to go to God this morning on their behalf, asking God to bless them. And I'm going to be saying words out loud, but this is one of those rare times where I'm going to say, hey, you have full permission to ignore me and say your own prayer to God. And that's, God can hear us all at once. That's pretty cool, right? And so we're going to offer a prayer for them, and then we'll let you guys sit down. We're so thankful that you were courageous and you came to stand on stage and let the church see you. So let's pray. Our dear God in heaven, we do pray to you because you are God. There is no other. You always have been. You always will be. You are always good. You always love us. You are always trying to give us everything we need to grow and to succeed into the kind of people you created us to be, which are people like Jesus, people who are loving, who are kind, people who are holy, people who are righteous, people who are merciful. Lord, we pray for all these kids. It doesn't matter where they go to school, what kind of school they go to. It doesn't matter what age they are, what grade they're in. It doesn't even matter if they're A students or just average students. It doesn't matter if they're athletes or musicians or, or drama stars or whatever the case may be. God, we pray for every single one of them. We pray that you will bless them, that you will remove the anxiety from their lives. We know that's a tough ask because so much of that relies on us. But we ask that you'll give them the tools they need so that they can be confident, so that they can have a good experience in their time of education, and so that we as a church will continue every week to be that place they can come to and find friends, Find a place where there isn't any bullying. Find a place where there is love and peace and harmony. Where we all are pursuing you and the kind of life that you offer us and your family. Dear God, we pray again that you will bless them, that you will be with their parents and grandparents and all those who love them and take care of them and raise them. We pray that you'll be with their teachers and those who help work with them in their schools. That you will bless those adults as well. So that, again, this can be a good, safe, healthy, truthful environment. So that these young people, as they continue to grow, continue always to put you first, and to know who you are, so that we live our lives for you, so that someday we can have everlasting life with you together. We thank you, Lord, and we're humbled that you have given these children to us to raise and to, to lead in your ways. We pray that you'll help us to do that well. In Jesus' name we all pray and say together, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you. I think I heard some sighs of relief. <laughs> but even just in that, you to continue to train them up in the way that they should go. And you have done that by bringing them here today. That's an enormous step in the right direction by having them here. All that you can do to help them be participants. Do everything you can to try to encourage them to be a part and to participate in the things that we have. Because we have good people who are working and volunteering and, and doing the best they can to be good role models, good leaders, good friends to these young people. And they're going to have so many challenges. 
And I'm 44, so it's not been, well, I started to say it's not been that long since I was in school. It actually has been a while. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it's been that long. But whenever I look out and see the things going on in the world today and the things that young people have access to today, it far exceeds the kinds of things even I had access to just a generation ago. And some of you, 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 you look around and you know, it's like, wow, what in the world? How do they do that? It's tough, but they do it by people like us helping them. And they do it by relying on the spirit that God has put in their lives. Because a number of these kids have given themselves to God. They have acknowledged that He alone is Lord, that Jesus Christ alone is Savior. They put Him on in baptism. And in doing so, they've been cleansed of sin. And they've received from God a gift of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit continues to work in us in ways we can't describe, in ways we can't fully explain. But we trust by God's truthful Word that that Holy Spirit continues to work in and through our lives to help us so that we won't only survive the things that life brings, but that we're able to grow through it and even thrive through it, even through the difficult things. Because God is an overcomer, and because God is a redeemer, and it's because He's a Savior that we're going to invite everyone who's in need of redemption, everyone here today who's in need of salvation, everyone in here today who needs to unload their burdens and receive the blessing of Jesus to come and to receive prayer, or to come, if you haven't already, and be baptized and enter into that new stage of life where I'm not saying you will never have anxiety again, but I'm saying you will always have access to the one who can overcome it. We invite you to come now as we stand and sing.